I've got this syllabus for both, you know, there's, <coughs> there'll be three sections in Daytona, and then this section meets in Deland at two on Monday and Wednesday. There's also an 8 a.m. lab in Daytona. I don't teach the Monday, Wednesday, um, Daytona labs, right? There's a lab manager that does them. So I'll be here on Monday, Wednesday. I have office hours on this campus from one to two in my office, which is right next to this lab. They, they normally lock that door. They, I'm gonna, I might have them change it, but they unlock this door because the lab manager asked them to do that, but she's gone now. Wait. But they leave the hallway door unlocked, I mean locked. I don't have a key to that, so yeah, that's a good point. Now I'll be here at 1.30 on uh, Monday, when, on Wednesday. On Mondays I have office hours at 1 to 2, so I'll be here from 1 to 2 then. So if you have any questions about your homework, right, in lab you do what's called purpose and principles. There's a video and there's instructions for them. Um, and if you don't get five points, all the points for the homework assignments, then you can speak to me during lab or after lab or before lab. If you don't speak to me and get, you know, someone, and you know, 100 points in this class, it's a total of 1,000 points, 100 points drops you down one letter grade, right? Because every, you get 700 points for the, the, a C, you get eight, if you have 800 points, you get a B, 500 points, you get an A. But your lab grade, is going to be identical to whatever your class grade is when you take this course at Daytona State because they're tied together. I'll add the 340 points that you can earn in lab to your all the points you earn in class to determine what your grade is, right? So the total between the two is a thousand. If you bothered, I don't know, did everybody, has anybody looked at the, the syllabus for class? All right, so you get, you know, there's 340 lab points, which is more than a third. 100 points for the practical, 100 points for the PMPs, a couple assignments. You should, then you get 660 points in the class. There's two different websites there's a site for the lab and there's a site for the class some people if you're not familiar or haven't taken this say at daytona state you might not be aware of that either right so right there's this i think most of you understand right this is the lab home page got my office hours right that's my phone number here at this office in the land i will only answer that phone while I'm here. I can listen to the messages when I come here, but if you leave a message over the weekend, write it off. But if, if you want to contact me at Daytona on Tuesday, Thursdays, I'll be on my office there if you wanted to call. Right, so the class website is different. And uh, like I say, this is that pre-course survey that you need to take for attendance verification. I think everybody in here, those two students are the two that I, Rebecca and Alina, uh, that they'll, they'll probably get dropped. But, and each week there'll be an announcement. I think I had one briefly up yesterday for week two and I thought, well, maybe I ought to wait till week, you know, another day. So you'll see week two It'll pop up, I think, tomorrow or later on today. And there'll be a, a list of things that you need to complete for that week. Now, if you're taking this, everybody in here is taking my online course. My Tuesday and Thursday lab is a hybrid course. So they have, it's a different, you know, it's a different shit. They go to a different website for that. But that's all. There, there's only six, five weeks, basically. You know, I wouldn't wait <laughs> to complete these, you know, in the last week of class. That'll be a problem. 
you know, you'll have, you'll have to complete like say section two quiz, section four quiz, section five quiz by July 17th when exam one is due. There'll be an assignment two that you should complete by then. Now, if you submit the assignment two later, I don't, I, you know, if it's, you know, just a few days or a week, no big thing. If you do them all at the end of the semester, I'd probably deduct points. I'll let you make up a few exams. I think I said in the video, I don't know if you guys watched it. I noticed, I, I looked yesterday at the people that watched the video for, the syllabus video for class, and I, I think two thirds of you guys watched it. Um, but I explained things like that in that video, you know. It's kind of a long video. I think that's a 30 minute one. I try to keep them short. I know time is money, you know. But, you know, if you click on these, it'll take you right to section two PowerPoint, you know, just to make it a little easier. I learned how to do that, you know, like a while back, and I thought, oh, I just I'll, I'll start doing that more. But any questions about that? Okay, so this is the lab. lab we started today <clears throat> and then the there'll be a practical that you need to take and there's also four quizzes that are all online we won't be doing them in person so it, that's pretty easy pretty straightforward now the attendance as I explained to someone Jamal earlier the the way it's going to work, right, we're doing this lab today. Uh, you know, Tuesday's, thir you know, Thursday would be July 7th if somebody's watching this from that lab. Uh, and, but say this is Monday, July 11th, I expect to complete that, those. I'd like you to do these purpose and principles. I'll kind of explain what they are in a minute. The other good thing is this helps you with Quiz one, which will be, you'll take online. I think it's due on Sundays. I'll cover, this is lab one, right? Lab two is this lab. So quiz two covers this material. Okay, quiz three covers labs three and four. So we cover all of these experiments and these. So that works. If there's a P and P next to it, that means you should complete the P and P assignment for that lab. Now, what I wanted to mention is, after July 20th, these the re the remaining part of the course will be online. And at this point, I've got jury duty July 18th. Hey, I got to come to Deland for that. So there. This lab will do on July 20th. There won't be a lab here. Okay. I, no, if I get on a jury, I don't know what I'll do. We'll just have to play that by ear. I'll do the best I can. I'll just play it down. You know, say something stupid. Um, but um, I shouldn't put that. I'll, I'll do edit that on the video. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like nobody watches my videos, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> You know, I got two views on some of them, right? I mean, and I've watched those. So that, that'll be nice. So really, right, we're meeting one, two, three, four. There's four labs, right? We won't be meeting this lab. But this is a hybrid lab. And technically, I'm not sure why. Sometimes they make them one day a week. Sometimes they keep them two days a week, but we ought to be just meeting one day a week, right? That, that's how the hybrid is supposed to go, but I, I don't make those decisions it's a below my, above my break, pay grade. As for now, we're at two days a week. We are, yeah. Yeah, there ain't nothing I can do about it once they, you know, I have to go by actually whatever that you see when you look, when you sign up for the course, right? You can do a course search and go and find this, you know, if you had, you know, maybe someone did it for you, but you can go 
and it has a description of the class. This class is, it says on the description, it's 30 to 70% online. That's what makes it a hybrid. And technically, that usually means you meet a class, instead of meeting twice a week, a hybrid class meets once a week. And in the summer, a hybrid class, instead of meeting every day, meets twice. You know, instead of meeting Monday through Thursday, you meet just two days. Instead of four, you meet two. And usually we have two labs. If it's hybrid, it ought to be, you know, two labs a week. I'm not sure why they don't cut it down to one. But. And so this will be online. Okay. Now I'd recommend you come if you if you can't make a lab, then you know there'll be a video you can watch, like this one I'm making for this. But there'll be I won't be making I've already made videos for the material, and we'll go over that. We'll, we'll watch a couple today probably. There's four quizzes, not five. I got to change that. That's a mistake. And. They'll be online. If you make up quizzes, technically, you know, I might. This is, de I had this policy for people that took it while well, we had them in class. And then the staying quiz is normally an exercise we do in lab, but we're gonna, it'll be just an online. And I'll go over what's on that. Actually, if you watch, it's called Lab Video 6. It'll, It'll explain what to do for that. I I'll talk about it as well. Maybe not this week, but you know, next. When it's close, make it closer to that day. If you go to the content section, here's the videos. So the this is a, a video on how to complete PMPs for there's five stains that we're doing right next Monday, right, those, those five experiments. So if you watch this video, it's about a 10 minute video. It would explain how to complete those P and P assignments. I'll, I'll go over it kind of quickly today as well. Then there's one for the, the remaining P and P's. The, you have, they're a little bit different, so I made two different videos. And then culture and bacteria, these negative stain, gram stain, and acid fast, all of these, is it seven videos, the school made for me uh, about six years ago, I think. Like the first two are YouTube videos, and then the spore and capsule and the remaining videos are YouTube videos. Right, if you. And what we'll do is we'll watch parts of the microscope today and use of the microscope. And then next week we'll watch these others. Um, and then I added to what, what's, you know, these describe what's in the video. And I have numbers for these, so I thought I'd put in, the, these are three different media. And so it's a video on them. So. If, if you didn't make the lab where I discussed this, then you could watch the video instead. Right, then to start, these three media are covered in lab video two. Right, so this just kind of just tells you what's in those videos. And then, like I said, lab video six will cover the staying quiz. I, there's not much to that. And then the unknown assignment, I'll talk about what that is, and that video would cover that part. So the under quizzes, so I made a video if you want to watch the, if, for the stuff you missed before you came. What's your name? So this is a list of quiz one you need to complete by July 11th. 
I might extend that day you know, to a Sunday. I don't think that's a Sunday. But the P and P of homework assignments are found under quizzes. But they're not quizzes. You don't have a time limit for them, right? You can just basically take as much time as you need. Quiz two, right, the July 17th is a Sunday. So, I guess July 11th, that was, is that a Sunday? That's a Monday. That's a Monday? So 17th, yeah, that's right, so this is a Sunday. Because the 18th is a Monday, yeah. But what I want you to do is I would like, we're gonna do this experiment covering these five stains on July 11th. And what I normally have, most of my labs, I require them to complete the PMPs prior to the lab. And I kind of got, I, I might start doing that again in the fall. But you, you have until midnight the day of the experiment. So in case you forgot to do them, you still would have time. Does that make sense? But it's probably best for you, it's like a little study. It helps you learn. The stuff you put in your homework assignment are things you're gonna be tested on for the quiz. Two, we'll cover these five stains. Okay, and then we take the practical. So what happens is if you, you do the PMPs before the lab, that's a way of learning the material. Then you come to the lab and do the lab, then you learn you get another chance that when you study for the quiz, you have another exposure. So by the time you do all that, you know, you ought to be, you know, most people are, will do very well. Any questions? I don't usually get too many complaints about the PMP assignments. That's usually how it goes. Yeah, see what I thought I would do is I didn't, I put, I took away those two chairs over there so that it, most of you would sit over here. <laughs> and if you come in late, then sit near that sink over there. But the problem with that, where she's sitting now, is it's pretty far away from the screen. But that's the only, only drawback to sitting there. But I appreciate you coming in quietly like that. You know, you know, I tell you what, if she had come through and just walked right in front of me and sat over there, I would have had a little objection about that. It's just considerate, right, not to do that. But I think some people just love the attention, right? I mean, they don't get enough from somewhere and think that my class or lab is a good place to get it, and I'll give it to them, more or less. I won't be happy about it. All right, so. Now, what do you do for the PMP assignment? It's really straightforward. I even have a where is it? Practice PMP down here, and someone, a couple people have done it. But all of them will be you'll be asked two questions. Now, you might open up a quiz, and it's for as many as three PMP assignments, three different experiments, and you have to do a purpose and principle for all three of them, but it'll just be in one quiz. Makes it easier to grade. But when you open up the quiz, there'll be a question, what is the purpose of the negative stain? And what is the principle of the negative stain? It could be what is the purpose of the gram stain, or what is the purpose of the spore stain? Or what is the purpose of a media? What is the principle of the media? All the purposes are written on the lab PowerPoint. So there's one, right? Someone asked about, do I need a lab manual? And there's a lab PowerPoint instead of a lab manual. So in the content section, you'll find, let's see, geez, okay, I think I put it on the desk now. Yeah, 
Micro Lab PowerPoint. That's the name of it. Now, we don't do P, uh, here's some uh, instructions for the P and P's. Now, the, the, the first few of them are about what we're going to do today in lab, right? It's just general lab stuff. Uh, there's no P and P's that we need to do uh, for that. But when you get down parts of the microscope, you need to know that for practical. And then here's the negative stain, right? Which is the first PMP, the first experiment that we normally do. We'll do that next week, Monday. So you know, on each one of these, there'll, there'll be a slide for each experiment that we do. Five stains are first, and then there's five, or the rest of them are gonna be about biochemical tests, right? right bacteria grow on media and and we have what are called biochemical tests that are conducted in the media so we can ask certain questions like do bacteria ferment this or break down starch or eat gelatin is another one they like I guess that they can eat on a diet of gelatin But for each one, regardless of if it's a stain or biochemical test or media, there's a purpose written on the PowerPoint. All you need to do is put that purpose for your answer, right, for, when I, if I asked you, what is the purpose of the acid fast stain? To stain acid fast bacteria. It's a type of bacteria. Now, in the principles, the remaining information you see here, you need to put in your own words and tell me that the primary stain for acid fast is carbon fusion, the decolorizer is acid alcohol. That goes in the principle. So I usually recommend that people um, That people say like just have a, a purpose and principle word file and put your purpose and principle for each one on there and then copy and paste what the purpose is for the negative stain in the box and then what the principle is that you've written already before you open it up this up and then there'll be a box for your answers right just copy and paste into the boxes then you have a record of what you did for your purpose and principle for all of them. Does that make sense? But there, it's not that complicated. It's just when you get asked these questions, what, the, what people do is they, they Google acid fasting. No, no I don't, I'm not expecting you to do that. I want the information that's on the PowerPoint to help you learn that material. But you Google and there might be three or four different ways to do this stain. They use different counter stains, right? We're using methylene blue. You can use brilliant green and other. But when I ask you what's the counter stain for the acid fast, if you don't put methylene blue for your answer, it's wrong. Even though your answer might be correct. That's just the way we work. I had never thought that it was that fair myself. It's the, the answer I expect you to put. See how that works? Don't complicate it. You use my PowerPoint. And that's the material you want to know when you take the quiz and when you complete the practical at the end. Do yeah. I got a textbook? This no, right, the, the, because this, we just use the PowerPoint instead. Okay. Yeah, they, some of the instructors are now using like Connect or other online services, and I, they're too expensive. I don't know. Okay, 
Okay, any other questions? So there's a couple ways, you know, keeping track of this. Looks like somebody's already completed them. I guess you could. Is anybody in here done? Kira, are you here? Hey, you did it already. Did you do it? Did you do it right? Yeah. yeah? Did you watch my videos? We won't look at them with this. I took, you know, I'm surprised. A lot of people, they're really apprehensive, you know, when they are wanting. That's good. So, but if you had questions, right, after I've explained this, right, the first five that we do are stains. So there's a video on how to do the PMPs for the stains. Then, after the following, next week we'll cover these are the rest of these PMP for three. There's three in this one, like there's two capsule and spore are two different experiments in one quiz. This is a quiz, right? There's three, these three media you need a purpose and principle for those three when you do that quiz, right? This quiz has two PMPs in it. It's not really a quiz, but I mean, it's in the quiz section. You know that. But if you wanted to watch the PMP instruction video for biochemical test, you could watch that before you attempt to do these if you wanted just to. But I'll, I'll, I'll just repeat what I've just said, right? The purpose is are in the PowerPoint and then the remaining material is use it like as a checklist make sure you have everything that's on that PowerPoint about each experiment in the principle it's an easy five points the uh, I think in the instructions Right, this is a Word file, PMP instructions. So I've got the principle for a stain, the principle for biochemical test. And then what I did was they used to be worth a total. You get one point for the purpose, and we used to get three points for the principle. Now you get four points for the principle, and one of the points you earn is if you put it right the material i would prefer that you use complete sentences to keep you from copying and pasting now you, you can copy and paste you might get all the points and you might not just depends right the complete sentences is worth the point out of the four now the gram stain i put Right? Yeah. Uh, what is the purpose of the gram stain? Even though I put this here, people still miss it. The principle of the gram stain is first to da 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 da. So, this is a, a correct answer for the gram stain purpose and principle. This is in the content section. Right, it's a file in the content section uh, under syllabus and schedule. And then, like I said, the videos, right? You have the PMP stain instruction video, PMP biochemical. Can you get any questions then? Any more? So then uh, I think you'll be able to take the practical online after July 24th. If you wanted to take it before then, I probably wouldn't. If you just asked me about it. 
And then you have until I think the Sunday before the, the class ends, which I think is July 7th, uh, to complete the practical. So it's, it's in the quiz section, it's the last thing to do. All right, I've got it opened up at July 31st till August 3rd. And I, and I might change that to, uh, a, you know, like the next Sunday. I don't know. We'll just see when we get closer to that. But the sooner you get that out of the way, the better. What I'll do, once you've completed the practical, the staying quiz and everything's all done, then whatever points you've earned in lab, there's a spot in the class gradebook for your lab points. So what I'll do is I'll add your lab points to your class points and then have total points in the gradebook. So before you take exam four in class, you'll know kind of where you stand. That makes sense? Right, because the last exam you'll have, they'll be worth 100 points. Now there'll be three online quizzes before exam four too. But if you've completed those three quizzes and all you have left is exam four, then the total points give you an idea of what you need on exam four. So for instance, under total points, you see, I have to do that manually too. The, the computer doesn't add them up. So if you take a quiz and do better the second time and you got two more points, you won't see that change until I go in there and change it myself. But let's say you have 870 total points between class and lab and all you have to complete is the last exam in class, which is worth 100 points, right? You've got four exams in class, all four are worth 100 points. That, that's what included in the 660. So if you had this many, then you would need how many points on the last exam for an A? Just 30 points, right? That would give you 900. Over 900 is an A. Now, if this was 770, then you would need 30 points to get 800, and that would give you a B. But this also tells you if you're 770 at that point, you can't get an A. All right, so, you know, today, and it's nice to know all that. I don't want you to know that after the class is ended, right? That's why I do this. If you're curious and want to know, if you want to start negotiating, making up stuff, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing that the last day of class, especially in the summer. It goes by too quick. So get your exam four done. Get all your total points two or three days before the end of the semester, right, which is August 12th, right, which is a Thursday. You can have it all done Sunday before. And then the other thing I'll do is once the total, once you have all your total points next to your grade, for class, I'll put a letter grade there, so there's no misunderstanding. But if you needed, you know, if you needed 10 points and you didn't complete a quiz, you know, I'd probably let you make up the quiz. But don't ask me that after the class is over, or don't ask me that, you know, like two minutes before, you know, after I've submitted the grades, I've submitted the grades, you know, I mean, I, I, I got my bill to help you out, but I gotta edit that too, I can't put that in there. But I, I'm not going to have any sympathy for people that haven't kept up with the lab material or haven't kept up with the class. They, if you miss two exams in class, the second one I just might have you, the makeup might be the final, a comprehensive final, and there isn't a comprehensive final that you need to take. But I've got one already I've used in the past. And I want you to do well. The way the grades break down in my micro course now, the last year it hasn't, the student grades have gone down a little bit, but they're normally, I have 40% A, 40% B, the rest are C, Ds, and Fs. And there's really not a lot of them. It, mostly it's Fs because the people just don't do it, right? They don't come to lab, or they don't complete the assignments. And uh, what are you gonna do? 
but I don't mind giving them Fs, you know, if I just part of the deal. So Alina, are you what's your name? Brittany. Brittany? Okay. So I guess Rebecca and Alina, they didn't come to lab either, so oh well. So I think we finished the syllabus. Now that we do have an unknown assignment we'll do online and uh, if you watch the video it, it goes over that um, you'll either get an unknown A or unknown B and that's a bacteria that you I'm going to give you results or data and then you're going to tell me what bacteria you think that is. That's worth uh, 30 points, right? 30 points for the stain quiz. That's real easy. Yeah, there's four quizzes, but normally in this lab, before the practical, I would say maybe one or two of you may not, but I bet you all of you will have at least 90% before exam, before the practical, as long as you complete everything, right? The, this is a real easy, uh, the PMPs are, you know, I'm giving you the information, you just have to take the time to complete them, you, you know, so you'll have all those points. Uh, the quizzes, you may miss a few points there, right? So you don't have 100%, so, but if you have above 95%, that's good. Uh, and then the practical tends to, you know, bring the grades a little bit down, but not, not by a whole lot. So you should, if you pay attention in here, right, have over 90% in lab. That, that, that is not hard to do. And it's not hard to do in class either. So I've got a little bit of the instructor disruptive. So I'll deduct five points, probably from a quiz. If you were to come in here every lab and walk in front of me and sit down over there, I'd start taking points from you. But other than that, you know, I don't expect you to be completely quiet while I'm talking, but you know, don't no conversation. That was a helpful addition. And then I thought I would do a quick safety. All right, we wash your hands while you're done, when we're done. Uh, today we'll probably do a few things with some media. There's, there's glove boxes. You're welcome to use them. I'd appreciate if you didn't use like three or four pair of gloves each lab, <laughs> right? Try to keep it to one, but not that big a deal. But now, when we do lab two, before we start, you start putting bacteria today. Any, no drinks are allowed. I will leave all your bags and stuff on that table against the wall. Don't assume the floor is dirty. Just assume that there's bacteria on the floor, there's bacteria on the counter, there's bacteria everywhere, right? You just can't assume, you know, I'm pretty sure they're pretty clean at this point, but don't assume they are, right? This is a microbiology lab. You know, it'd be nice when you're done that you would clean your countertop with a disinfectant. I think, I can't, I don't know which bottle it is. You could, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to clean it before the lab either. Now, I kind of like you to wear lab coats. If you don't have a lab coat, I'm not going to keep you from doing the lab. Okay, but we're, we're handling bacteria is probably a good idea. Right, bacteria. We've got, this is liquid media. And this media is solid, right? We call it media, 
because it's it allows us to grow bacteria. Unfortunately, in this tube, they they like bought these where you can write on the tube, and it, it's keeping you from looking at the surface of the media, right? Because what the way it works, we got the. <laughs> If it's bacteria and it's an auger plate, then you would inoculate the auger plate. You take, say, like a loop like this, put the bacteria, put the loop on the bacteria, and then spread the bacteria on the surface of that plate, right? Now you're not, you're only gonna put maybe a thousand or so or 10,000 bacteria on there and then they're gonna grow on the media, you incubate it, and then you'll see colonies pop up. You know, of bacteria. And they're growing because there's a food source in the media for them to do that. Now on these tubes, it can be liquid broth and you just stick your loop in there and they grow in the liquid or it could be solid now when the solid broth that we have there it's called a slant and it's solid and this is auger here and then this is the surface here this and then you inoculate the surface of that auger and they grow on the on the top of it now when they grow and you're and they've used the a media, you know, the tube with the blue on here. The only way you're going to see the bacteria is by looking on the top down, right? You can't see them because this is in the way. You, you could probably look from the back because it's sort of transparent. But these are bad. You don't really, you need tubes that you can see through. But they didn't ask me about that before they ordered all these tubes. So if, uh, if I ask you here, never lay the tubes with bacteria flat on your desktop. Always, if you're given bacteria and they're, they're you know, say growing in this broth, always keep that in the rack, right? If you lay this flat, the liquid would roll out the top. These lids are not sealed tight, right? They allow gas to be exchanged in and out. So if this liquid touches the top of this cap, it'll drip down the side of the tube and on your finger. If there's bacteria in here, then the bacteria will be on your finger. Avoid that. But so what'll happen is people are handling this, there's bacteria in here, and then they're like, you know, multitasking, doing something else. And the next thing you know, it's spilled. So next week, we'll, we're going to inoculate media. And the next week, we'll look at the media. When we're done with media, the media most of the time goes over here on this table. And uh, if, it's, if you have to throw it away, then we'll put it in the trash cans over there. And I'll tell you next week which ones to put where. But that's generally the, what, how we do that. We will, we'll be given bacteria, and I think they'll be placing them on the tables. Now, if you're sitting at a table and you don't see bacteria on there, they're expecting you not to sit there and to sit over there. Now, I don't really give a, you know, where you sit, but that's, we're supposed to be separated by some. Do you have any, yeah, so you guys are supposed to be sitting there. You're on the right one. So maybe next week, maybe you guys can sit at the other end, okay? I think that one, you guys can sit there. Yeah, there, there, there's a couple over here at the very end. Okay, and then you'd be closer to the, see how that works? So they don't want anybody sitting right behind you, I guess. I don't see, you know, I don't care. I don't think we'll have to worry about that in the fall. We're getting so close. Don't get me started on COVID. 
Don't get me started. Uh, biohazard. Now, if you, we're going to do a gram stain next week. And when we're done with the slides, these are the red biohazard containers. So the slides go in there. And there's usually another one on this side. Now, these are the ones that aren't YouTube. They were made by the school. Each one of them has like a 30 minute. It's the microbiology introduction. Biology classes uh, videos today describing some techniques that we'll be using in the microbiology lab. So I just skipped that. Okay, in this video, we're gonna, I'm going to explain how we culture bacteria. And in order to do that, we need to uh, have a, a food source for the bacteria to grow on. Right. And that's if you guys want to move media. over here, it's okay. It's up to you. Right. Media needs to contain both a carbon and energy source. And one of the more commonly used medias in lab is called the TSB, which stands for triptych soy broth. All right, this is a, a triptych digest of a soybean extract. And if it's liquid, why right, you call it a broth, right? Well, I'll show you how to inoculate that soon. Right, and if you add agarose to the broth, it becomes TSA because of the agar in it, right? It's a solidifying agent. So it goes from a, this liquid to a solid, it's kind of like gelatin, same consistency. So it's easy to puncture it, you know, when we inoculate it. Now, when when the uh, it's a liquid, if you before it becomes a solid, if you put it on a on an angle like this, you can generate what's called a slant, and it generates a a larger surface area for the bacteria to grow on. They literally grow on the on the surface of these media. Okay. Now, and for in many times when we do a lab. We're going to be inoculating different biochemical tests and we're going to ask do the bacteria you know use the carbon energy source that's found in the media or are they positive for one particular test or not All right so this is an example of the, the cinnamon citrate tube and it's actually a slant it contains citrate if the bacteria are able to use citrate as a carbon and energy source, or if they're able to ferment citrate, uh, then they're positive for this test. And we can tell that because when they ferment the, the citrate, the pH changes, right? And most of these biochemical tests will have pH indicators in them. In this case, it's from thymol blue. It appears green at this pH, Right, but if they are able to ferment citrate, if they have the correct enzymes for that, then the media will change color. It will turn to a blue. Right? So the cinnamon citrate tube, when it becomes blue, you say that they are positive for that particular biochemical test. So I, I talked about the cinnamon citrate in that video in this video so you kind of get an idea of what we mean by biochemical tests there are media TSB is a media TSA is a media when we grow bacteria in this media we're not asking any particular question you know like are they fermenting something are they using something as a carbon energy source right it's not a test. It's just a way of growing bacteria and maintaining, say, a stock culture. You know, if they, the lab manager has to maintain E. coli or Serratia marcescens, different bacteria. They have to put them in TSB. Normally, it's on a TSA, which means this is liquid media without the auger. You add auger to the liquid media. It becomes solid, and you may call it auger afterwards, right? If you look at the, if I got a list of them, I can't think. I guess if we looked at the PowerPoint, we have, but this is called mannitol salt auger. 
Mannitol is in the media, which is sugar, and we're asking can they ferment them, ferment the mannitol if they grow on that plate. We've got another media called McConkie auger. So if they have the term auger in there, you know it's solid and they're using auger in the media. But there's other things in there as well. Right? TSA has triptych soy to, as a carbon source, but it's not a biochemical test like these. Eos and methylene blue auger. I've got gelatin tube. There's no auger in this media. So it'd be incorrect to call it gelatin auger. It could be gelatin media or gelatin tube because it's in a tube. Gelatin is the substance we want to know. Do bacteria secrete gelatinase, which is the enzyme that breaks down gelatin? If they can break down gelatin, then they can use it as a carbon and energy source. Then you would say they are positive for this particular test. The starch plate, now we could call this the starch auger plate or the starch plate. Now when you take the practical, you might see a picture of it and have to name it. Okay, so you, you need to be familiar with how you would name these plates if you were to see them on the, on the practical, right? This has blood auger or blood in it, and there's auger as well. It's blood, sheep's blood. And there's no auger in this, it's a liquid media, so we just call it fennel red broth. There's two, there's different sugars that are used for this media, so it just depends on which sugar is in it. But we'll go over all these when we do the labs. These videos help me not have to talk for two hours all at once. Calculate some media and show you the proper technique for that. Right, to begin with, we need to start with a sterile loop. Right, that's how media is inoculated. We want to transfer bacteria from a source and then place the bacteria in a sterile uh, uninoculated media. Okay, and we can use a needle, right, it's just a, a wire, straight wire, or a loop, which is a wire with a loop at the end. Right, normally the loop is the best to use unless the uh, needle is necessary. All right, so I'm going to right, start, when you turn the gas on, be sure that the handle is pointing in the direction of the tube, the, uh, it's basically in the middle of the how you can turn the, the handle. Okay. And then I'll light the flame. The, the flame ought to be, you know, roughly four or five inches up. And then place the loop in the center of the flame. If you need help adjusting the flame, let me know. Bright red. And it takes it about 30 seconds to cool down once you do that. All right. If you go too quickly, it'll kill the bacteria that you're trying to transfer. Now the bacteria, when you grab the bacteria, you don't need to grab too many, right? What I normally do is just touch the surface and leave a nick, right? If I see any bacteria, I'm a So if you see what they did is they took a cotton swab with bacteria on it and they swabbed, you can see where the swab went, right? But that's bacteria growing there, right? Here's a nick where I kind of grab some. You don't need to drag your loop across there to pick up the bacteria. Normally if we had three or four labs and, and we're all using the same plate, then you guys have to, you know, leave some for them. But since this is the only lab, it doesn't really matter. And it, this looks a lot better on my computer screen, if you want. My loop, you are responsible for the material in these videos. There. There's literally maybe 100,000 to a million. So I want to place them into some liquid media. Okay, so I remove the cap, use my little pinky. You don't do that. Loop, uh, the surface of the 
the tube if you like, right, and then place the needle down in the tube. And then I usually twirl the, the loop and give it about 10 seconds so that the bacteria dissolve into the liquid. Okay, and then I could flame the top of the tube, put the cap back on. If you do that too long, it'll just so now, melt the plastic what I've done on. Is I've added added a couple that. thousand so bacteria and removed them from the surface and inoculated a fresh media. Now, if I wanted to inoculate uh, uh, a slant, I could grab some bacteria, right? Say, and I'm going to put these bacteria on the surface of this slant, right? So you start at the bottom of the slant, and then just move the slant back and forth, hold it, the needle like you would a pencil and just work your way up the surface of the slant. And you can usually see from the reflection where you've left. I don't know why I keep calling it needle.